And welcome back. In this video, I made the pistons to the connecting rods. Hey you, get off her. And I finally learned what women really uh, want. I dated this girl in high school, her name was Shirley, and uh, for Fatwood. Fatwood. She couldn't get enough Fatwood. That's the problem. She liked the Fatwood. She liked the Fatwood. That's uh, probably why we wouldn't last very long, but anyway. <laughs> I have a set of compression rings here that I marked with a sharpie. As you can see, this one has one dot on it, signifying it's gonna go in cylinder one, and this one has two dots on it so it's going to cylinder number two when you start gapping your rings you don't want to mix things up for example the ring that's marked with four dots on it obviously it's going to go in cylinder number four here's a chart on gapping your rings now you're going to have to make your own measurements on your own block uh, because everything's going to be different from block to block so just make sure you come up with your own measurements that's just a guideline on how to achieve your proper gap on each of your rings here I am installing the first ring, which is a compression ring. Now this is right out of the box, so it has not been gapped yet. You want to push the ring into the bore nice and even. Some people like to use an old piston or even a piston you're going to use on this job right here. But I try to minimize potential damage knowing how clumsy I am. I may drop the piston. So it's why I picked up this uh, squaring tool. It's very inexpensive and it works well. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll try to find a link for it on Amazon and I will link it down in the description. So go check out that Amazon link for any tools or parts that I may have used in this video. That squaring tool works well. The only downside is to you got to be careful. You could cut your hand open because the edges on it are very sharp. So you don't want to slide your hand across it. So you just want to make sure you push down nice and even. As you can see, my feeler gauge didn't fit in the gap of the ring while it was in the block. So we're going to have to expand that gap a little bit to get into the right specifications. Here I have another tour I got off of Amazon. Again, it's going to be in the link. A mistake that's common is people try to grind both sides of the ring. And the correct way to do it is to just pick one side, which I'm choosing the left side or what shows up as the right side of your screen. And you want to stick to that one side as far as grinding the ring. Ring. Another mistake is they turn the grinding wheel in a clockwise position. You always want to turn it in the counterclockwise position or going towards the inside of the ring. Turning the wheel in the wrong direction can cause damage to the finish on the ring and it could even leave a burr on the ring so when you go to install it into the block it could potentially scratch the board. As you can see I have my finger on the ring and it's relatively close to the grinding wheel. The reason for that is as that wheel goes past the ring it has a tendency to give the ring a little bit of a kickback and you don't want that you want that ring to stay nice and flat as you're grinding it. Now keep in mind you're only taking off small amounts at a time with the grinding wheel so don't go crazy with it. After you're done grinding just grab a fine file and we're going to deburr it. It doesn't take a lot just one or two passes and you should be okay. You may have noticed that I'm only deburring the left side of the ring and it's because we're only grinding the left side of the ring. So the right side still has that factory cut edge on it and you don't want to touch it at all. Now this is the very tedious part about this build. You're gonna have to keep repeating this process over and over again until you get into the specifications of the feeler gauge of where you have to be. And unfortunately, you're gonna have to square up every single ring every time you check them. It's just the way it has to be done and you're gonna have to repeat this process for every single ring in the whole block. So you know that saying, ain't nobody got time for that? Well, you better make time. <laughs>
now as you can see i'm just about done here with the first ring my specified filler gauge actually fits in here now so now we can move on to the next ring within this cylinder and it's pretty much a lot of the same thing over and over again the only difference is it's going to be a slightly different specification as far as which filler gauge has to be able to fit into the ring but you may notice these markings that have like n something and some numbers that always faces up if you see any markings or a little dot that's like a like a divot on your ring that always indicates up so there is a up and a downside and you want to make sure you're very conscious of that whenever you're on your grinding wheel and taking material off of your rings Now that I'm done with this ring, I can move on to the oil rings. The nice thing about the oil rings is in the instructions, the only thing that's specified is a minimum gap, which was about 15 thou. And it met those requirements right out of the package. So it was really nice because there was no modifications necessary to make these oil rings work. So it really did save a lot of time. Now that I'm done with the oil rings, I can move on to something that's a bit more controversial. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and mark all the parts here so I could weigh everything individually and I'm gonna weigh it a few times just to get an average and write everything down. And what I'm gonna do here is try to mix and match parts so I have an even weight across the, you know, across the board. Basically, you don't want uh, whatever is in cylinder four to weigh like five grams more than whatever is in cylinder one. So for example, I would take the heaviest piston and try to match it up with the lightest connecting rod. Now, here's the thing. I know a lot of people like to take, for, for example, the lightest connecting rod and then grind material off of the other three to get, those, to get the weight down to match that lightest connecting rod and, you know, rinse and repeat for every other thing like the pistons and, and the, the pins and things like that. But I'm not going to do that to my parts. I just don't want to. I just think the gains aren't really worth uh, the effort, you know, to make your things weigh within less than a gram. They're already really close. Weighing everything and writing all the numbers down on paper, all the weights here are really, really close right out of the box. And I tried different combinations, so many combinations. I was crunching the numbers. And no matter what combination I came up with, everything was always about a gram off or at, at max two grams off. So at the end of the day, it just seemed like it was a lot of effort and it just wasn't worth it because no matter what combination I came up with, the numbers always ended up being roughly the same as far as the weight difference. So I tried my best, but it's not perfect. But by all means, if you wanna go ahead and grind material off of your parts to try to get as close as you can, be my guest. Now it's time to install the rings on the pistons. Now you may have noticed that I'm not using an expander tool for the rings and that's just because after doing some research online I just found that it's probably best if I don't use it because it can cause some harm sometimes. So I tried to do it by hand and it worked out perfectly fine. I repeated the same process on the other three pistons with no problems at all. You want to start with the expander ring. It's the easiest one to install by far and it literally has to go in first. After you get that one in, you can install the lower scraper ring. Now this is pretty easy to do as well. You just start one edge and work it around the piston and that final edge, you wanna make sure you lift it up high enough as you lower it into its groove, just so it doesn't scratch the piston on its way down. Then you can go ahead and install the upper scraper ring and pretty much the same exact process for that. Once you get that oil rings all set up, you can move on to the center ring. Now the center ring is going to be a little bit more difficult since it's a thicker gauge steel. But the same idea here, you're going to start on one end working around and lift up that edge. So again, it doesn't scratch the piston as it's falling into its groove. And finally, the top ring or the compression ring. That's the one you're going to install last. And this one goes in pretty simple, so you should not have any problems with it. One thing to keep in mind is the up and down of the rings. Now the oil rings don't have an up and down so it really doesn't matter, but the center and the top ring do have an up and down so you wanna make sure you're installing them in the correct orientation. You may have noticed that I no longer have gloves on and it's because they kept getting trapped between the rings and the piston and just turned out to be more problematic so I got rid of them. 
At this point you can see that all the rings move freely and that's how they should move. I did have an issue on one of my other pistons where there was a dent right above the oil control rings and it was physically preventing the rings from moving freely and I had to take the rings back out and see what was going on. It was a dent similar to this one right here. Now this one doesn't matter because it's not going to interfere with anything so it's perfectly fine. That's why I didn't mess with it. But there was a similar one like I said right in the channel where the oil control rings go and it would not let the rings move freely. Take everything back apart. I raided my daughter's uh, nail collection and I found like a really small file and I was able to just file away that little burr and now you can see how the rings move freely now. So just really keep an eye out for that. And that's it for part one. I'm gonna have part two coming out really soon guys. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and like always, consider subscribing and thanks for watching.